Um, the title's actually a little bit wrong. We're not going to talk about Euler's. That's, that's pronounced Euler's number. We're not going to talk about that today. That's that's later. Um, but we're going to... Um, I'll just read you the objectives. By the end of the day, you'll be able to calculate how much you would owe or earn when investing or borrowing money with compound interest. Okay, so you don't you probably don't know what compound interest is right now. I'll share with you what that is, and then um, you'll see the math that we do to do that. So let's go ahead and begin our lection. So you don't. I, this is already pre-printed for you, so you don't need to write it. Right, just follow along with me. So. First of all, what is interest? Um, without reading this, what, who can explain to me what interest is? I feel like you're going to tell me what interest is. is. No, that's actually that's exactly what I said. Matt. <laughs> so in your own words, someone tell me what interest is. Oh, basically, like when. Is it like if, uh, if you owe someone something, then they charge interest if you like forget they paid it to them? Okay, good. <laughs> that, that, that is exactly it. So basically, owing someone something? Yeah, and, and we're just yeah, talking about money, money yeah. right? Exactly. So. Okay, okay, no. Interest is a Shh. interest is a fee that is charged or credited when borrowing or loaning money. So I, I, I said it in two ways because sometimes you can earn interest for yourself, or you can um, have to pay interest to somebody else. So it just depends. So let me. And some of you guys are already aware of it, but I'm still going to give you a little bit of an example here. We have example. When you buy a new car, you probably don't have twenty dollars to $30,000 to pay for it sitting in your wallet, right? That would be really nice, but you don't have it, right? So what happens is, is you finance the car is what they call that. And what that means is that you make an agreement with a lender. Lender means somebody who lends you or loans you money. You make an agreement with a lender whereby the loan whereby they loan you the money up front upon the condition that you're willing to pay them back over a certain period of time and usually with cars it takes about five to ten years depending on how you set it up um, however as kind as this may seem they're not doing it just to be nice they charge you money they charge you a certain percent for that loaned money and that amount that they charge you is interest now let me give you guys an example buying a house is the same way so um, whenever you whenever I bought my first house I didn't have a lot of money to put down on it so we had to get a small one and my the, the, the sticker price if you want to call it that my house was 170 but by the end of my 30 year finance loan that I set up for the house the, the house was ended up being about 250 to $270,000 that's interest. So they loaned me one seventy, but they got a whole extra one hundred and seventy one hundred thousand dollars out of that. That's interest. So, um, and it's pretty powerful too. You got to pay. You got to be careful. The worst people for interest is credit cards. The amount of interest they charge is so high it will literally ruin your life if you're irresponsible with a credit card. They will totally destroy your <laughs> economic life until you're gone. Um, and by the way. Um, there, there are. There's a thing out there called a credit score, and it basically runs how responsible have you been with paying back your money. And so, if you don't pay back what you owe, then you're in trouble. And little piece of advice: whenever you guys do get a credit card, you you use the credit card to buy something, but then you go home and pay it off right away. Go pay the credit card people right away. Don't don't wait for them to send you a bill and pay what it says on the bill, because they do that on purpose. They only charge you just enough where you still owe them some next month and they can keep charging you interest and you'll never stop paying it off they'll keep you on their line like a fish on a hook and they'll drain you so pay it off but credit cards are good because they help you build credit easily and also they uh, they also <laughs> are ways to earn like credit like reward points and things like that so they're good but not if you're really using it to just borrow money because you don't got it if that's the case you shouldn't be using a credit card okay they're bad they're not a good but there are good things. By the way, I have a retirement as a teacher, okay? And my retirement's decent, but it really wouldn't be enough to support me in a comfortable way whenever I'm gone or whenever I'm, when I'm retired. Um, so I had to do something else, and what I did was I took out something called life insurance, and I pay into that every month. Now, 
I'm giving them money, but since I give them money, they're paying me interest. And by the time I retire, I'll have earned so much money by the interest they paid me that that will support my retirement as I get here and I'll be able to be more comfortable. So there's ways you can make it work for you. And there's ways that it can work against you and you just have to be smart about it. I'm not horribly smart about it. I know a little bit, but just some stuff to share with you. So um, we're, we're in a unit on exponential functions. Um, and in this unit, um, we're talking about, in this lesson, we're talking about compound interest, and it turns out that compound interest problems are exponential functions. So it's, it's an application of what we've been learning. So let's review a little bit. Um, how do you calculate interest? Well, we, we did this before a little bit, okay? The A represents the final amount. And you guys can add these notes on your notes that I printed for you. The A represents the final amount. The P represents the starting amount. And in the world of finance, the, the, the starting amount, the reason why they use the letter P is because in the world of finance, the starting amount is what they call the principal. Okay, so they use the letter P to represent the starting amount. And then R, you guys already remember what that is. It's, it's your percentage divided by 100. It's, it's how much it's increasing or decreasing. But when we're talking about interest problems, it's always an increase. Okay? We're talking about adding money on, right? So there it is. So let, let's go ahead and apply this really quick. Suppose I loaned you $40 on the condition that you pay me back in a week with 35% interest. How much will you owe me by the end of the week? So we have, I don't know my final amount yet, so I'm just going to leave that as A. But I do know my starting amount, which is what? Well, yeah, but in the story problem here, what is the starting amount that I So I, I'm borrowing 40. That's the starting amount that I owe. But it's going to be 1 plus what? Kind of 35, but 0.35, right? If you divide 35 by 100, you get 0.35. And then after that, we're just going to use a calculator. So um, here we go. So 40 times 1.35. So if I, if I loaned you guys 40 bucks and I said, just pay me back in a week, but give me 35% interest, then what you would have to pay back to me is 54 bucks. So that's the fee I charged you for loaning me money. 35 is secretly high. Nobody does that, not even credit cards, but credit cards are closed. They charge an interest rate of 25%. That's bad. That's, that's rough. They're adding a quarter of what you borrowed from them. That's huge. You guys go to banks, by the way, if you ever put your money in the bank, and they give you interest too because it's a free savings. It's like not even a percent. It's, like, <laughs> it's stupid. Yeah, so, like yeah, you get two cents by the end of the year or something. <laughs> Yeah, but now the life insurance thing that I do, they give me a, a much bigger percentage rate. It's, now you're going to laugh, but it is bigger by the end. It, it adds up, but it's like 5% or something like that. And um, the other good thing about the life insurance thing is, is that the government seems to give us good service when we're in these weird walls sometimes. Like you know, with retirement, sometimes they'll take money out of your retirement and pull out. They can't touch life insurance. So when I pull my money out at the end of my time, they can't put tax in on that money that I pulled out. So there's smart ways to do stuff. Um, all right, so I want you guys to practice this. You guys go ahead and do this student practice down here. And if you need a calculator, you, you can use your phone. or But, you know, we're going to need calculators anyway today. So I would say get a calculator if you don't have one. So. <laughs> okay. So, guys, you, you should be getting about 117 Okay. Let, let's see how to do this. Um, so, Adrian Hernandez, help me set this up a little bit. I'm going to write A equals what? Uh huh. So, 
So if you just push that into your calculator, you get your 117.8. Let's move on to a new topic. All right. Okay. So guys, that that's basically just what we call simple interest, doing it one time and you're done. Well, I'm about ready to share with you guys an example of compounded interest. So let me read this story to you guys, and then we'll we'll see if you guys can kind of follow the thinking here that's going to be going on. So, you didn't have to. Did you? No. Okay, good. Suppose you want to invest one thousand dollars at a bank. Okay. And you have three banks to choose from. Now, all three banks promise you the same thing, kind of. They all tell you that they're going to be giving you. Um, 20% per year, okay? But they do it slightly differently. So it sounds like they're the same, but they actually are a little bit different. This bank is going to give you 20% once at the very end of the year. So you're going to put $1,000 in there. The whole year is going to go by. At the very end of that year, they're going to add on an additional 20% of what you invested, okay? Now, this other bank here in the middle, they're going to give you 20%, but they're going to break it up. They don't want to give you such a big sum at the end of the year. So instead, what they're going to do is they're going to give you 10% once in the middle of the year, then 10% again at the end of the year for a total of 20%. Okay? And then next we have this one. This last bank, they really want to spread it out. So what they do is they give you 5% four times. So 5% in the first quarter, 5% in the second, 5% in the third, and finally at the end of the year in the last, 5%. 5 times 4 is 20. So it's all 20. So you might be thinking, what's the difference? There is a difference, and I'll show you why. All right, so you guys can start writing this with me here. So let's, I want to calculate this. So what's my starting amount? Okay. And what is, it's going to be 1 plus what? 0.2, right, 20%. And what does that come out to be? Let's see, that's going to be 1.2 times 1,000. I believe that is 1,200. You guys can check me if I'm wrong. So basically, they're going to give you $200 at the end of the year. Dream on. Nobody really does that, but there you go. That's, I'm just trying to pick nice numbers, of course. It's nice. Okay. Now let's do this next one here. So these guys are just going to throw on $200 into your account at the end of the year. All right. Here's my next one. So in the middle of the year, they're going to take your starting amount, which is 1000 and they're going to give you an additional what? 10%. Now, after they do that, at the middle of the year then, if you calculate this, you're going to end up with $1,100, right? But that's only the middle of the year. We're not at the end of the year yet, okay? So here's what's going to happen. At the end of the year, they're going to take whatever's in the account. Now what's in the account? Now you've got $1,100, right? And they're going to give you an additional 10% of that. Now, I don't know what that is, so I'm going to punch that in the calculator real quick if I got one. Can somebody tell me why this came out different? Just raise your hand and tell me why. What do you think? We had handled. Okay, good. So here's what's happening. So they're give. Remember how they gave you money? How much did they give you here at the middle of the year? They gave you a hundred. When they do ten percent, they're not doing ten percent of what you originally put in there, are they? They're doing ten percent of what you put in plus the 100 they gave you. So they actually end up giving you more. So, there you go. So John's seeing it. The more pieces they break it up into, the better that is for you. So which bank should you choose? The last one, obviously, right? Now, I'm going to show you guys a faster way, though, to do that last one. Okay? Here we go. Yes, it is. 
Check it out. Ready? So I have, what am I investing? $1,000. Now, I'm gonna, they're going to give me an additional what the first time? 5%, which is 0 0.05. Okay? Now, you're right. And that's going to come out to be 50 bucks. Okay. Now, you guys are good. Nice job. Um, okay, take it back. All right. Now, how many times are they going to do this? Four times. Four times. So basically, they're going to be multiplying what you have by this. How many times? Four times. Four times. So instead of multiplying this thing four times, just put a fourth power there. And, and I know what you're thinking. It makes you feel a little bit uncomfortable. Is that really the same thing as what we did over here? It is. So, for instance, if you want to come back up here to this problem and just change it to a 2, it will get you right to that answer right away. And so instead of calculating this thing four times, you just put how many times it happens here. So, so now you guys can see this is compound. This is, what, this is why this is related to exponential functions. Okay? So there it is. Um, can I clear this? Let's do it. Let's punch it in on your calculator. Let's do that. I forgot to do that. So everybody type 1,000, parentheses, 1 plus 0 0.05, and then find your little caret button and type 4. What are we getting? Twelve fifteen point. Five, one. I'm just going to round to the nearest penny. Now, is that an impressive amount? No, that's not really impressive. And the only difference between bank three and bank one is like fifteen dollars. Um, but hey, fifteen bucks—that's that's another. You know, take your date out to Wendy's or something. Right. If you want to, if you want to be classy, if you want to, if, if you want to just go nice, you know. Yeah, we went to Wendy's and. Got her a happy meal, and that because that that well hear me out because that 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 particular month what the toy that was in there was a plastic ring. I, I just killed two birds with one stone. Five bucks. Okay. I'm, just, I'm just teasing. All right. All right. So that's what we call compound interest. Compound means. Does anybody know what the word compound means? Pieces. It means pieces. So you're taking that interest rate and they're breaking it up into pieces. And so that's called compounded interest. So I'm going to give you guys a formula in a minute, but first of all, make sure you're aware of some vocabulary. Um, you don't have to write this. I printed it for you. But the word principal, I already shared that with you. That means your starting amount. You guys ever heard the word APR? You never heard of that on the news or nothing like that? Or not on the news, on TV? Okay, it, it means annual percentage rate. That's like the 20% the banks are promising. Yep. That's it. That's the annual percentage rate. That's the piece that they're breaking up and charging you per month. Yeah. Yeah. Say that again? Yep, that was the APR. Now, I'm, I'm not really too worried about using that language in here, but just for real life application, you guys hear that, that just basically means that's the percent they're going to give you every year. Okay. All right. The block. Okay, I'll hook you up in a bit. All right. Now, guys, you're going to, in, in the word problems we're going to be doing, you're going to be seeing the word compounded. And remember, that means pieces. Okay. So. There's some more language associated with this. If you see the word, if they say it's compounded annually, that means one. Was that? Yes, I'm having more technical problems, but that's okay. We're good. All right. Um, I want you guys to look at this formula. Now, this one may look weird to you, but I want it to make sense to you also. Ready? So remember this one we wrote down earlier today? Remember this? It's the same thing. Okay. But it's, it, here's the differences. Here's the differences. Uh, the P is still the same. That's the starting amount. The R is still the same. That's the annual percentage rate, the APR. However, what's different is, is there's a power out here. Now, why is that? Well, I already showed you. When they break something up into four pieces, that's the power that goes out there. But here's another thing. Do you guys remember what the percentage rate was on the problem we had? 
It was 20. And if you broke it up into four pieces, what was it? Five. So what you do is you take your... Did it change again? Yeah, that was pretty good. Um, what you're going to do is, is you take the rate that they tell you and you divide it by however many pieces they want. So if you took 20 and divide it by 4, what do you get? 5. Okay? So it's R over N in times. Now there's one more thing up here that I haven't talked about. It's the T. And that's because in the example I gave you, I was only looking at one year. But couldn't that happen for two years? Or three years or four years? So in that case, if it happens four times a year and you did it like for five years, you would do four times five, which is 20. They would, have, they would give you 20 times. Does that make sense? Four per year, five years, 20 all together. So you multiply by the year. So there it is. This just means you're breaking up your rate into chunks, and that's how many times it gets credited to you. Okay? And this is what we call the compounded interest formula, and I've labeled what every piece of it means. A is the top final amount. P is the starting amount. R is the interest rate. N that, that's the weird one. That's going to be the one that comes after the word compounded. It tells you how many pieces. So if they say quarterly, then N equals 4. If they say monthly, N equals 5. Sometimes on your homework, you're gonna, they're just going to tell you. They're going to say it's compounded 12 times a year or 5 times a year. Then you're just going to use that. But sometimes they use this other fancy language here. And T just represents how many years they're doing it for. So that's it. I've talk to you guys quite a bit. Now we're ready to actually do an example. So let's do a quick example. Go ahead and find example two there, please. Okay. How much money will you have after 5.5 years if you've invested $100 at an annual rate of 10% compounded monthly? First of all, how do you know this is a compound interest problem? It says compounded. So when you guys see that word, I want you guys to think, oh yeah, this thing. That. Oh yes, you will. All right, now. Got to bring my notes. Now, let's let's understand the story too. How much money am I putting in this bank? They're putting a hundred dollars into the bank, right? Is that what it is? Okay, and. What percent are they telling me? What's my APR? What are they going to give me every year? 10%. But how many pieces are they going to break this up into? That's the hard one. It's 12. Why? Because it's compounded monthly. monthly. So they're giving me 10% of my $100 that I'm putting in, but they break that 10% that up into 12 different pieces. Um, and how long am I going to let them do this for? 5.5 years. There you go. Okay. Yeah. No, no. It's they divide the 10% up into five pieces, or the 10% up into 12 pieces. Let's see. Let's see what happens. With $100, let's see how much that turns out to be. It probably won't be that impressive, but I don't know. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, oh, per month? Yeah, you'd, you'd get very rich very fast. You're right. All right, so what letter is this in my formula, you guys? Is it P-A-R-N or T? That's my time. That's how the number of years is your time. Okay? What's this number right here? That's your starting amount, your p value. What is this one? <coughs> kind of. The r is that number divided by 100, which is 0 0.10. Okay? So you got to convert that one to a decimal, right? And then there's another number up here, but it's disguised as words. What is it? Monthly, that tells me what letter up there? The N is 12. So all we have to do, guys, is take that formula, plug everything in where it goes, and then the calculator is going to do the rest of the work for us. Okay? So here we go. Notice that I don't know what A is. Are any of these numbers labeled as A up here? No. So A, the final amount, which is what I'm trying to find, is the P, which is what? 100. 100. 1 plus R, 0. 0.10, 0. 0.10 over, 12. because we're breaking that percentage rate up into 12 months. And that's going to, they're going to give it to me 12 times a year for how many years? 5.5. And you know, I don't like how I wrote that though. Let me back up. 
just to two spaces here. I don't like how I wrote the exponent. I'm going to write it like this. 12 times 5.5. 12 times 5.5. I would write it like that on your paper. There's a reason I put it on there. Yeah. No, because this isn't multiplying by 12. It's being raised to the 12th power. So a power does not cancel out division. Okay. So now, guys, we're going to let the calculator do all the work for us here. So um, turn on your calculators really quick. My calculator looks a little bit different than yours, um, but I think for the most part it's going to work the same way. Um, apparently. There it is. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to show you guys how to type this into the calculator. Ready? Um, we're going to type... 100, parentheses, and then 1 plus. Now here's where things are getting a little bit weird. It's not going to look like that. And you might want to put this on your notes too, by the way. When you put this into your calculator, you need to put this fraction in its own little set of parentheses so your calculator knows that that's a fraction. If you don't do that, it'll be confused. So we're going to push parentheses again, and then we're going to push 0 0.10 divided by 12. I just pushed the division button for the fraction bar. And then we're going to close the parentheses, and then we're going to close the other parentheses because there's two parentheses here, right? Okay, now we need the power. How do we get a power? Carrot, and then in parentheses again. In parentheses again, you're gonna do. This is you have to speak the language of your calculator. It's a robot. It's programmed to hear things in a certain way. This is how you do it. Uh, Twelve times five point five. Close parentheses, and that you've typed the whole thing in, and then push equals. So. That's not very much money. I mean, after five and a half years, you got 72 bucks. Go do a car wash or something. But, you know. Oh, okay. Okay. And that, that actually might be close to realistic. I don't know. But mind you, this is all assuming that you haven't been taking money out of your account the whole time. If you just leave it in there, you don't touch it. You take money out of your account and stuff, right? So there's that. All right, um, so on your notes, I don't know if you want to write this or not, because on, on test day, I know a lot of you guys don't have your own calculators at home, and so on test day, you might forget how to type in the calculator. You might want to write it like this instead, just so you remember how to type it in your calculator. But um, Now, for, for those of you guys that don't have a calculator at home and you have to do it on your cell phone, it's a little bit more tedious, but I'll, I'll walk you through it. So get out your cell phones and I'll show you how to do it without a, calcu with a fancy calculator. You guys ready? Yeah, you know, I'll show you that. I'll show you that afterwards. I don't want to lose your guys' attention too much. I want you to practice this first. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> That's crazy, huh? It grows very fast. Can I can I uh, kill this now? The, the, oh, I didn't write it on my paper, did I? It it was one seventy two point nine. What did I do? Can I do it? Oh yeah. No, because it's not a it's not a person or an animal, so I'm good. All right. So here's one for your, you guys here. It's a guided practice. Let, let's have you guys help me out. This is guided. I didn't, I didn't print it for you. So you guys don't need to write this, but let, read it really quick. I'm going to call on you guys in just a second. Read it really quick. Think about it. And I'm going to call on you. Go ahead.
Okay, I'm going to call on you. Ready? So. Alicia. What do I write first? Close 2000. I did. All right. One plus. All right. I'm going to ask Nelson. What do I write next? 0.18. I'll, I'll, I'll take that. That's good enough. John, um, what goes under the 0.18? Not this time, because it didn't say compounded monthly. What does it say it's compounded as, John? Compounded 20 times. So there you go. So it's 20. All right. Next. Uh, Samantha, what, what goes here? Twenty times seven, the n times the t, right? Okay, now punch it into your calculators. I'll call on you to share out your answers in just a second. So, guys, here, here's one more for you. This one's not a guided practice, so go ahead and try it from beginning to end on your own. See if you can get the right answer. I'll give you guys a little bit, and we'll call it a day after that. Okay. So the first person I'm asking, Chris, I want you to tell me what my setup is here. What's my setup? Uh huh. Point what? Point twelve over. There you go. They could. Can you shut that chat down? All right. So there's your setup, you guys. Um, the one thing you want to watch out for is because it's compounded quarterly. That means n equals four. Okay. Now we're going to um, get our answer. The answer you guys should have gotten is, we'll tell you what, instead of me doing it on screen, I want to show you guys how to do it on your phone. So if you want to get out your phone really quick and do this with me, I'll walk you guys through it. The, the pain in the butt thing about this is that when you're doing it on your phone, you've got to do one calculation at a time. So on your phone, the first thing that you have to do is, is you have to do the fraction part first. So. Get out your phones really quick, and I want you guys to push on your phones. What is 0.12 divided by 4? Huh? 0 0.3? I think it's 0 0.03, isn't it? Or no? Okay, now the next thing, you, this one you could probably just do by hand. You don't really need a calculator for this. What's 1 plus 0 0.03? Okay. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to do this. And you could probably just do that by hand, but sometimes if you have weird numbers there, you'll need to use a calculator. So what is 4 times 10? Okay. The next thing you have to do is on your calculator, you're going to do this. Now, a lot of times the, the button on your calculator you used for a power, it's not a carrot. It looks like this usually or this. So what you're going to do is you're going to type the number 1.03 on your phone. And then push whatever button you have there. And a lot of times to get that button, you have to rotate horizontally. I did it. So um, now you do 1.03, push this button, and then type in your power. Okay. What Now just round it for me. What does that come out to be? 3.26. And then the last thing you have to do is just multiply so you have to do it in pieces on a cell phone, piece by piece. And so if we multiply those, what are we getting, guys? And for those of you guys that just did it on the calculator, was that pretty much the same thing? Yeah. Okay, good. So that's how you do it. You do the fraction first, then you do the power after you simplify the inside and the power there, and then you multiply. So you got to do it piece by piece. All right, so we're good. That's the end of our lesson. Um, you guys do have homework tonight. It's a weekend, so you 
you do your job one more day for your hour to be your ten hours to be completed, and then I'll give you four problems like this, but that shouldn't take you too long. Monday we'll have a new lesson. Next week we're done with the homework and class stuff. We're back to normal Monday because yes. So it's too slow, and I know it's nice to move slow makes it easier, but it's also we can't slow down that much. All right. So that being said and done, we'll call it a day. We'll see you guys next week. Don't open the door, please. I'd just rather you didn't. I'm sure the security guard's out there anyway, but.